Hello and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and back chatting with me today is music video director Brendan Canty. So in regards to you going out and shooting and doing like location recce and then going and you know in Iceland you take these amazing shots and your your <laughs> diary section on your website is full of beautiful photography. What's that shot worth? That's my Canon compact then. Is it? It's like the size yeah. Oh my god. Okay. It's lovely. Is it's, it? It's a gorgeous camera. I was in a I was in a camera shop in ah, in Dublin or Cork. I can't remember. And uh, I think my friend was looking to buy a camera for his dad. And I was just like, oh, I got that Canon Compact M. And they were being so snobby about it because it was just a cheap camera. And I was just like, it is amazing. Like yeah. the power of that little camera and the look of it. And it, um, it's better. Than it it destroys my 7D any day of the week. That's good to know that you don't have to lug around a DSLR all the time. Yeah, I have a lovely little 22mm lens, which is like a pancake lens, oh, this thin. So in your pocket, job done, in my off jacket you go. Pocket. It's in my jacket pocket over there. There you go, yeah. it's just around with you the whole uh -huh. time. No, it's really, that's been, the be that's probably one of the best things I've ever bought. Wow, ever. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. I might get a Canon endorsement out of this, and best thing that I've ever. That would be brilliant. <laughs> um, and what about other gear and stuff when you're out shooting like videos? Say if it's just you doing um, a small, budget video, what kind of gear would you bring on that? Um, so I have a Canon C100, um, but I kind of, there's newer ones now which shoot slow-mo, which I should have waited around to buy, but they're very expensive. But that's a good camera. It's it's what Vice would use on, doc, on all their documentaries and stuff like that, mm. or the C, C100 or the C300. Um, I still would use my 7D a small bit, uh, but to be honest, on my low budget shoots now, I would use the two people I mentioned in Galway, Colm and Roman, because they just love shooting with me because um, it helps build their portfolio and I always work with interesting songs and stuff, so, mm. and they have... They'd have their own gear. They have a Red, a red Epic, um, which is amazing, and they have Steadicam and they have their drone and stuff like that, so... Yeah. I keep saying drone, I don't use it. But the drone features a lot though in your work, doesn't it? I, I would, yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, in my latest few videos it has. Yeah, because obviously I'm thinking of Darkest Ocean by All Twins. And yes. That's a drone video and it's, I think, I think, I'm going to be very honest with you now and say, before I saw that video, I hated drones. Absolutely, I just had a bad taste in my mouth with drones. Yeah, I'd I just, agree with that. Yeah, and then I saw that video, I was like, okay, that's how you use a drone. Yeah, uh, and I would have, I remember uh, when we went to make that video, there was one sort of, one type of drone I wanted to do, kind of like True Detective, all those sweeping drone shots when they're driving through the, mm. the bayous or whatever yeah. they call them. Um, but, and there was only one, I'm sure there's more, but there was only one uh, drone operator I could find in Ireland who could shoot that well. And then I saw your video, I was like, that's how you make a piece of technology work for you in an artistic yeah, that's sense. all Colm and Roman, they're... They're phenomenal. Yeah. They're, one of them flies it and the other controls the camera and their eye is amazing. And in that uh, Darkest Ocean video, we had so little time to shoot the drone stuff. You're talking a f like a 15 minute, uh, about a 10 minute window. No. And they had to get the shots in that time and it, no one else would have got it. Like they, were just, they just know what they want. So the, the right drone operators, um, our drone is, is 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 can be lovely when only done right and only when there's a purpose for it i mean some people go i want a video with drones in it and you're just like yeah. why there has to be a reason yeah go away like you know? <laughs> just go away just go away like. <laughs> no so you it did has it. to be a purpose you did it well and yeah. um, that was kind of a, a live performance type video wasn't it with the, yeah. the lads on the beach and then you do a lot of narrative videos too yeah which do you have a preference i loved doing narrative videos and now i tend to be trying to do like push my narratives to be more like poetic is a nice word, or I try and tell stories with less or through more metaphors or something. That seems to be the wave I'm on at the moment. Although my producer, one of my producers, hates them and just thinks they're <laughs> thinks they're a lot of crap. Like, um, but <laughs> well, <laughs> I disagree with him. It's um, art. It's fine art music. It's videos. more art, but he's like, we never just go back to doing narratives. He loves my narratives. You're, you're represented uh, by Academy Plus. Do mm -hmm. they have a lot of influence in what jobs that you take and that kind of thing? Not really. I mean, they'd always send me on jobs they think would suit me. Yeah. And I'd normally be the picky person, but they'd also be very like. Maybe you might like the song. I don't. It possibly isn't right for you, but I thought I should send it on to you anyway, or something oh, like that. So it's quite easy going. How did that come about? How did that um, academy? Yeah. Uh, through me sending on my stuff to a lot of production companies. Really? Mm -hmm. 
Just the, just like that, just like unsolicited kind of like yes. here's links to my show reel, blah blah blah. Here's links to my show reel. If they didn't uh, they didn't get back to me, so I emailed them again. Hey. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I yeah. I just had a list of production companies I really liked and emailed them and of all, I think I emailed maybe about 15 and of all 15, like six got back to me. Of those six, four wanted to meet. Of those four, one cancelled on me and mm. of those last three, Academy wanted to sign me and that Academy happens. were the, my number one company on the list, which was really nice. And probably yeah. because I was, it kind of makes sense if you think about it because I think a lot of the directors on there would have been like heroes of mine or whatever so yeah. I would have definitely got inspired by them so my style, they probably would have seen their director's style in my work or something. Yeah. So well, that was quite nice. Fantastic. Although I still haven't done much, any work with them yet so. Ah but even being listed is fantastic. Oh like. absolutely. Yeah. No I just went from being like kind of, uh, I was signed to a brilliant agent, Chloe, and uh, I was kind of her busiest director, but I went from that to being like kind of bottom of a pile. It was almost like being like promoted in the premiership or something. And then suddenly <laughs> you're like fighting for relegation or something, <laughs> trying to climb up the table. But yeah. Ah, no, it's not like that. It's I just a, need to win a job. And I've come s like super close and just, um, and uh, I, I actually kind of did win jobs, but then bigger commercials coming over here in Ireland. And, and you had to take them instead. Yeah, so I'm signed to a production company over here called Hinterland. Um, which, cool. which is great as well. So. Wow, so you've got like, loads of stuff coming mm. in. Do you think that we have enough Irish bands at that level to keep you going? It's the commercials that seem to pay your way and then you do music videos to, as I mentioned earlier, to keep relevant and to always keep working because you need to do that or else you'll just go crazy. Yeah. Um, so your fan base loves to see the music videos, I suppose. It gets your name out there. It's just like in photography. Like I do, yeah. I do band photography and that pays absolutely nothing, but it boost your profile and to you can get be you creative as well and it's fun and it's you're passionate about it yeah it's the same thing have you got any exciting projects come up that you can talk to us about uh yes uh, so uh talos the band we're on the on the we have on our label he'll be releasing an album next year and what's good about owen is he writes music that i love if i didn't know him i'd be the biggest fan of the music yeah. it's just it uh, it totally kind of suits the style of my cinematography mm. or my films or whatever so um, music videos for him is kind of what I'm going up and planning stuff for the album which is really exciting because I mean you could be sitting there waiting for the right track to come through and you might get one or two tracks a year that you really really love and then your chance of winning them are kind of like well you're up against other directors so yeah but with Talos I just have them there and the only crux about it is I have to pay for it myself. So that's yeah. what I'm working on. I'm doing a video for uh, uh, an amazing Icelandic artist called Jófidr. Brilliant. Um, so that's very exciting. So we're going to see more of Iceland coming through your work? Nope, I'm going to shoot it in Connemara. But uh, there's an Icelandic <laughs> girl in it. <laughs> okay, in Ireland. Yes. But okay. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Listen, I can't wait to see more of your work. Brendan, yeah, thank, thank you, you so for much for joining me. Cheers, thanks. Well, that's all we have time for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you'd like to watch more videos, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.